Interest rates look likely to continue rising, at least in the near future. As such, bond prices are anticipated to continue to fall. Considering these factors, when do you believe bond investment will become viable, if at all? Um, I believe, uh, uh, I think the question of if ever is a very uh, good one. It'll be... <laughs> It'll be uh, closer to if ever, uh, um, because we have um, a structural problem in that we have a lot of debt and are adding to the debt. And the only way that that can be dealt with, the, be the best way of the bad ways, is to create a very low real interest rate and a very low uh, nominal, uh, nominal rate relative to nominal growth. Um, so we have a situation in which uh, there's going to be a transfer of wealth. There is a transfer of wealth going on. It's taking place subtly because when inflation rises faster to a level that is faster than the interest rate and you have a bad real yield, that becomes a tax on those who have it, but it doesn't become really noticeable. If governments instead get their money by uh, taxing, that causes a great uprising but if the Federal Reserve or central bank prints money and money goes out, and nobody thinks where does the money come from, who's paying for it. It comes from um, the depreciated value. And so I think that's going to be important. In this cycle, we're getting to bond yields. Um, I think the question is approximately at what rate will the inflation rate settle? And then with it, what, where will the nominal rates be? Um, I, I'm not precise, but I would say it looks like in the vicinity, if there were not further shocks, and there probably will be further shocks, that the inflation rate um, for the dollar, relevant to the dollar, which is what they're setting monetary policy on, it would be somewhere in the vicinity of 4.5%. With a 4.5%, and right now the break-even inflation rate is a little less than 3. I think that that'll go up to in the vicinity of 4.5%, and I think that there'll be a real rate that's positive on top of that. Not a lot, but there will be. So I think that probably the bond yield goes up in the vicinity of four and a half or five percent, and that what that means is uh, it has implications on other markets, because uh, first um, all markets are um, sensitive to interest rates, so the stock market, because all investments are a lump sum payment for a future cash flow. So um, it's the discount rate. The interest rate is the discount rate for calculating that present cash flow. And so but when we have um, that, um, the bond yields go up, all other assets, the present value goes down. And so just a change in the interest rate of that magnitude would be bearish for stocks significantly. And that doesn't include the negative effect, which will come from the lower earnings as a result of that. Mm -hmm. So yes, I think that we're in a situation where we're in, 
we're in the beginning or we're maybe halfway through the move. Mm -hmm. And that's what it would look like to me. Okay. Big transformation is underway right now. Okay. Yeah. A question from Mr. Hyung Jong Kim. What are your prospects on gold prices? Um, gold price, gold is used um, at times when there's um, a loss of faith of the alternative money, quite often in wars, because you can possess it. Gold is the only asset that one can have that doesn't require only financial asset one can have that doesn't require somebody giving you money. When you have stocks, it's somebody's liability. When you have debt, it's somebody's liability. They have to give you the money. Gold is that kind of um, asset. And um, I would say, um, and, and it comes particularly as a time of war because nobody knows whether they want to, uh, who will pay and what. Everything else is debt. If you pay in dollars, the United States, you're getting a promise to get debt. Um, so it depreciates. So I think that right now we are um, in a period where there's rising real rates and the tightening of that, and that that's uh, uh, been weighing on gold. And I don't think that that is um, going to continue very long. I think that um, it's, um, it's a situation that um, you will have to get to the point where the economic problems uh, become greater. In other words, the tightening, um, the sequence is the tightening produces the bond problems, mm -hmm. the credit, that higher interest rate mm -hmm. then sequentially causes the equity and other markets to go down. And then when that goes down, then the economy goes down. And when the economy goes down, there will be more printing of money. And I think that that will be a time when there's also um, greater conflict in the world. I think if I was to take this cycle, I think 2024 will be um, a very bad year because the tightening that is taking place, we're partially the way through this cycle, but we're not through the cycle. And um, 2024 also sets itself for, for another political year. So I think that the next couple of years are going to be difficult, next year and, and two and, and a half, and then it becomes a political cycle. So I would say if I was looking longer term, that would be a situation where gold would be um, um, uh, preferred. Right now, what's happening is uh, there's a shortage of money. Um, and that shortage of money, which is causing, there's a shortage of money and there's a lot of inflation. So you, you look at the US dollar, you look at the euro, you look at uh, the Japanese yen, and you look at China's renminbi, and they all have um, problems. They need, they're all printing money. They all need to print money to stimulate their economy. Um, and simultaneously, uh, there's a need for the tightening of money. So that dynamic of having stagflation, it will become more intensive, I think, over the next 18 months. And then, and then you'll have the move with my, my expectations after that. Gold is um, the third largest reserve of central banks, mm -hmm. but it's not been used as a money. Mm -hmm. And when there's a need for money, um, they go to the traditional money led by particularly the dollar. Of course, the appreciation of the dollar in relation to other currencies is causing its own problems, such as in the emerging markets, because as they have debts and obligations to pay dollars, uh, that creates a, a squeeze there. That's why we're seeing the dollar being relatively strong in relationship to the euro and the yen. But all of those countries 
um, currencies being very weak in relationship to goods and services prices. Wow. I mean, the, this year, the year 2022, uh, we have witnessed one of the, uh, the uh, I mean, the most uh, uh, unprecedented uh, bear market uh, in uh, capital markets, you know, the the equity market, you know, the correction and bond index, you know, record uh, uh, double digit, you know, deficit. And now you are saying that 2024 will be a real, real, uh, really, you know, I mean, the difficult uh, year. Wow. I mean, people about a month ago were talking about, you know, fat fever and, uh, you know, People are going to the, you know, this, you know, the, uh, have, a, I mean, have a tendency to go back to the inner shore and the uh, Fed would come in to rescue. And, but you are saying that we are, you know, uh, going deeper and deeper into this, you know, the, uh, difficult uh, situations. And the, the year 2024, you are depicting that 2024 would be a, uh, not only in terms of market, but also in, the, uh, in, 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 in terms of complex, it would be a very difficult year, right? Yes. Um, and just to summarize it, um, there's a cycle, a tightening cycle. Mm. And the tightening cycle is, uh, causes the economy and the markets to contract when interest rates get high enough. And those interest rates have to be high enough to be in line with inflation considerations. Mm. So when we look at inflation and we look at the whole cycle, it looks like we are about halfway through that cycle. Mm. 